Howdy. This is episode two of the Data Pack tutorial series. Today, the main focus is going to be on a deceptively difficult question. Suppose you have, and I'll denote it with a sign. Suppose you have a, n a number 10. 10, it's all well and good. Let me try, see if it's easier to read. It's easy enough. I have a number 10. Is there a way that I could store this number 10 so that Bob over here can read it? As it stands, Bob cannot read the number 10 unless he has access to, unless he just sets his own variable to equal, be equal to 10. But how do I make this into a variable? Oops, there we go. How do I make this into a variable, and how do I pass it over to Bob? <laughs> that was a very hokey way of explaining it. But the answer lies within a command that you might have seen before called the scoreboard command. Now, there's two main prongs to the scoreboard command. There is objectives and there are players. Objectives let you define scoreboards that can be set as any whole number value between around 2 billion and around negative 2 billion. And players lets you give values to players, entities, just about anything that has NBT via the scoreboard. For example, let me go to objectives, and let's add a new variable that I'll call tutorial test inc. For now, I'm just going to use dummy as the second argument. You might have seen something flash on screen. Let me just, like, do a little bit of this. I'll come back to what these are in a moment, but these can be very helpful in certain situations. But they're not helpful right now because we want it to remain static when we're not using it. And this is the way it's displayed in-game from a sidebar, so I'm just going to call it test. All right, now we have it defined, so let's make it show up. Not objectives, let's do scoreboard objectives, set display. This is the probably one of the most important ones you can do. Don't bother with the teams. I don't usually screw with them, but from what I understand, that's mostly for multiplayer stuff. And now, if you notice, uh, nothing's actually happened yet. That's because no entities in the current world have any values. But let's change that by doing scoreboard players add my cell. Oh, I'll just do this. Either way works. And let's, do we want to do add or set? I say we do add. They do exactly the same thing in this situation, but if I were to do it again, it will set it to 98. Whereas if I were to do set, it actually just sets the value to whatever. So bring it back to 49. All entities can also be given scores, even things you wouldn't normally consider entities, like you could give an item an entity, or an item an entity, yes. You can give an item entity a scoreboard value. I'm not entirely sure why, but it all depends on the situation and the data pack. So, on the subject... Let's start to implement this stuff inside of a data pack. Let me tab over to Notepad here. The first thing that we need to cover is making new variables with, with this. Let's do scoreboard objectives, add tutorial test, let's call it kill switch. Dummy kill switch, like so. When I run the data pack now, it will make this new objective. If it tries to run it a second time, it won't actually do anything, but it's not going to cause a compiler error if the scoreboard is already ex already exists, so that's not a problem. So what do we do now? Well, let's do scoreboard players add at e type equals zombie 
grab you. There's a lot of copy pasting involved in stuff like this. <laughs> Tutorial test kill switch, add one. And then let's do kill at E. Type equals zombie. Scores equals. This is the. This is kind of confusing, but this is the way that you show. You test for things with specific scores. You use scores and then bracket. And then um, curly brackets. And then inside you do. Let's say 100 is our limit. Like so. With two dots instead of three, weirdly enough. But now that that's done, let's tab back over. Oops. Let's tab back over into game. Reload. And let's spawn in a zombie. Let's do some provisional stuff first. Set the time to night. Do game rule. Do daylight cycle false because I like it. I like it at um. This is a nice time to be up. And then we'll do scoreboard, objectives, set display, sidebar. By the way, I'm not typing lightning fast. You can just press tab to autocomplete. Kill switch. As you can see, that garbled mess that represents the entity is ticking up more and more and more. And if I were to spawn a bunch of them, all have their own unique values. And in the case of this, they will all die one after the other. Now that is very, very, very useful. I cannot, exp I cannot express how flippin' useful that can be at times. Now let's try something a bit more complex. Let's go back over to Notepad. Suppose instead we make it, let's see, I'm trying to think how I would do this, execute as at e type equals zombie, if entity at e type equals arrow distance equals to run, oh wait, I'm going to have to initialize it too, execute. And I'll go into more depth of what how execute commands work in the future, but for the time being, just know that they exist, and they are very useful for stuff like this. Run scoreboard players set at s kill switch 100. Type equals arrow, distance equals, oops. So suppose that we want to do it so that whenever an arrow is within proximity, it divides that value by two and then it's destroyed. There's a major problem here. Because the operation function, even though it's way, way better, only accepts other scoreboards as its values. So, if I want to do something like this, or suppose I want to make it so that whenever the arrow is within radius, it gets divided by two. What I'll have to do is create another new scoreboard tutorial test constant dummy constant. And this constant, I'll have to set to 2. And so I'll do yada yada yada. What scoreboard players set at e type equals zombie. Tutorial test constant 2. Divide equals at s constant. This should work. So now. Let's add one final bit and then kill at e type equals zombie scores equals do kill switch equals to one or less. So now 
That was a lot of code, so hopefully my shotgun method worked and this actually does work properly. So let's reload. Get, <laughs> not get an arrow, get a bow. Spawn in a zombie. I think it worked properly, so. Let me increase the radius, actually. Let's make it a three radius for the sake of example. Yeah, there we go. Whenever it gets within radius. Come on. Come on. What's up with that? Oh, I see. If you notice, I shot it over towards the origin. I forgot to say that it should be... I forgot to do the at. It's an important thing that I missed. So let me tab back over to Notepad++. Uh, let's do at at s. And let's just... It's not required in all of these, but just because I'm paranoid, let's copy all these over. I think it's only required in these two. And then let's tab back over, reload, and now, there we go. 12, 6, 3, 1. 50, 25. Like so. I'll have to excuse my dogs. Just like that. Let's shift gears a bit and talk about statistics. Because as I mentioned before, we were you oops, I don't know why I'm using Notepad++ for this, I should be using Minecraft. Before, when we defined a, a scoreboard, we set it to dummy. Well, we can also set it to, let's do tutorial test thing, I don't know. There's so many options here. There's the air, the armor, the amount of times you've died since it's initialized, the food, the health, killed by things from a certain team, level, items you've broken. I'm not going to be able to scroll down this far, but it's items you've broken, items you've mined, things that you've used, mobs you've killed, whether you've killed any mobs. I believe if it, it's like Minecraft. Let's see if I can... Dot custom. Bingo. These are the interesting ones. Animal bread. I believe this is with elytra. Travel one centimeter. Ringing a bell. Moving a boat. Cleaning your armor. Dealing damage. <laughs> this deaths again. Distance dropped. Items enchanted. Cauldrons filled. You get the idea. There's a lot of things you can do here. There's also some... This also leads to the to an issue where this is the only way you can do a lot of these. So suppose I want to test whether or not the player is crouching. The only way that I can do that is by using that score, that statistic. So with that being said, let's do one final segue to talk about the homework assignment. Write a data pack that transforms you into a vampire, sort of. Give the player a timer Whenever you kill a mob, any mob, the timer is reset. However, if the timer ever hits 300, the player is killed and the timer is reset. I feel like that should be... It's not, it's not too evil. It's definitely harder than, last, than the last one that was just Hello World, but it's a nice, it's nice practice for a more complex oh, yeah. assignment. But... I mean, that's about all I got. But this was, hopefully, this was enlightening. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I always forget what to say at the end of these. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Have a good day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying here. Regardless, have a good day, y'all.